Well, our moms think we're funny. Hello. We wanted to let you know that we recorded this episode in the car during a road trip. The audio is not as good as we would like, but it was too funny not to post. We hope. Anyways, enjoy all your sexy pieces of meat. Yeah, we're going right now? Yeah. So, how about them Fat Thor cosplayers? That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> okay. we're, we're never going to be able to do this without laughing at the other person. Yeah, well, I, that's okay, though. Okay, so. <laughs> as long as we want to get that part down, I guess we can just stop it. <laughs> okay, so you ready? Yeah. So, hi, everybody. I'm a Coney. Hey, everybody, this is Turk182. So, uh, we've, we've recorded, we're recording in the car right now, driving back from Heroes Con, which was a pretty great show. I got to meet Stan Sakai, I got to meet Sergio Aragonez. I'm, I'm a happy camper. I got a rock. <laughs> but, uh, but no, uh, we, we've been recording a lot of uh, podcast episodes in the car, and we just learned that uh, the mic we were using for that had such a small diaphragm that the sound of the car's engine running made the mic clip nonstop, so you couldn't hear anything we said. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately that means that we, some we can, we can redo, but others, uh, they're just gone forever. It was just, we were just caught up in the passion of the moment, and it'll, it'll, we'll never relive it. The magic is gone. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, as Cody was saying, we have doing a lot of these recording in the car because, you know, we're going back and forth between, between cons. And, you know, when we're driving, you know, a couple hours here and there, you know, it's, it's good to kind of use that time constructively, creatively, and it helps kind of keep us, you know, keep us kind of juiced, especially when, you know, like in this case here, we've been, um, we've been, you know, at, sitting at a con or walking around or whatever for a good, you know, six, eight hours. So, you know, need something to kind of keep us alert. Yeah. Especially because we've slept a lot during this con. Oh, God. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I, I don't, I've never been as exhausted. We're used to going to cons and just like, just rocking it out to like maybe two in the morning or so before we go to bed. Even if we were just like, what's the, uh, was Heroes, was it Heroes Con? It was uh, Galaxy Con last, I'm mean, sorry, it was Super Con at the time. Yeah, Super Con last year. Con. Where we, uh, we went back to the hotel and uh, we were both pretty tired, but then ended up staying up to like two o'clock in the morning watching Golden Girls reruns. Yeah. yeah that was a good time. Uh, you, you know me, I love my Golden Girls. Oh, yeah. So uh, I tell you what though, man, if it had been like a Designing Women marathon, I'd been all on that. <laughs> I, still, I still haven't seen the Designing Women. I need to. Oh god, yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to do like a, we need to do some uh, Designing Women. <laughs> you know, that's, that's one thing we can do. We can do like we've got our less our less watches. Yeah. We can start because there's a uh, there's one podcast they do every episode of The Simpsons. Oh, right? nice. And we could do one on like alternate between Golden Girls and Designing Women. I like it. Yeah. But we still have to go through Johnny Saka though. Oh, God, yes. And we still have to go through um, the Japanese Spider-Man episodes because uh, at, at GalaxyCon last month, I bought the entire DVD set to Japanese Spider-Man. So that's right, you did. That's right. I'm so, and I forgot about it. I threw it in my messenger bag and forgot about it until I got home and unpacked. And I was like, what's this bag? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> and I have been so excited ever since. So, yeah, we, we totally got to do that. But uh, before we jump into today's podcast episode, Turk, I've been I've been baiting you and hyping up this hypothetical question that I want to ask you. Okay. Okay. I should. And uh, so, for for a little context for people, uh, I got this from the Oni Plays channel. Uh, if you don't know Oni Plays, it's the work of Chris O'Neill, who used to be a Newgrounds animator. Uh, he's he's a really really funny guy, and I, I love his brand of humor. Uh, he's a little edgy, a little offensive, but hey, you you know me. That's just like right up my alley. But uh, he and his co-stars are very fond of asking each other these stupid hypothetical questions. And this one just was, it was such a long question and it had so much build-up. Julian was asking Chris and it was like, it was such a long build-up to this question. And, and like by the end of it, it took him so long to get around to the point of the question that Chris was like, I don't have an answer for this, dude. <laughs> it was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta ask Turk this, okay? All right, all right. So, so Turk, so you're walking along one night, right? walking home and you, you see this you see this stranger approaching you all right and he's, he's like kind of the shady looking guy kind of this like kind of the scruffy looking fellow uh, and as he gets closer to you he's just like locked eyes with you and, and like you're trying to avert your gaze and somebody is just like he's got his eyes fixed on you 
and you know you keep thinking he's gonna like step around you or step out of the way or whatever as, as most people do and he's just not he's just like on a direct path for you okay All right. and uh and then you realize that he's he's actually like he's made you a target and he's just coming right at you and he's ready to throw hands and uh so he's he's just like he is moving and he's picking up speed and you remember that you have a knife in your pocket all right, so he, he just comes and he starts to throw a punch and you, you whip out your knife and you stab him right in the stomach, okay? Okay. Okay, and so you, you've just buried your knife into this guy's stomach and, and you're just like, you still locked eyes with him, but then you look down and you realize there's a dark spot on his pants from where he came right as soon as you stabbed him. What do you do? <laughs> Uh, so am I allowed to ask an additional question? Sure. Context? I don't know if I can provide that context. I'll do my best. So what, what time of day are we talking here? Uh, dead of night. Dead of night. So yeah. no one else is around? Right. Uh, yeah, you, you stabbed him and he just... Stabbed me, like, just right in the stomach, right? Yep. Pull the knife out. Just keep on going. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna walk home. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that his final moments were, were good because. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not. So now you just hear behind you. Thank you. <laughs> so I. So apparently this guy. Well, I don't know what it was. He wasn't. Obviously, he wasn't expecting a stab in the in the in the stomach, right? Well, yeah. I mean, no, nobody expects to just jizz like that. <laughs> Who <laughs> knows? I mean, he wasn't expecting a stab. He was probably expecting me to like punch him or whatever. But instead, you know, I stabbed him, and uh, and but he swung at me. So if he had connected with me, I don't know if he would have been still as excited or thrilled or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, I don't. Uh, I'm not gonna waste my time with the police I'm trying to tell some like you know one-sided story about this happening in the middle of the night. That becomes a he said, she said, and I've got a knife, and they're like, "Oh, that knife is over. The blade's over six inches." So unfortunately, you know, now you're gonna go to you know go to prison. Oh, you know, it's like uh, rape you in the ass prison. Uh, can, can I ask you why is it in a hypothetical situation? Are you still carrying an illegal knife? <laughs> no, I'm just saying it would be one of those things where the police were like, I mean, I'm like, I measured it, and it was only a four inch. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> See, you, you did, you measured it from here to here. It's kind of like, kind of like, like what guys measure their dicks. And they, 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 they go like, yeah, they, yeah, right. They go, they go like, well, like, pay, like, 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 way under the balls and up oh, to, you know, it's like, no. And what you're saying, you don't kind of like commit seppuku with the ruler when you're measuring your dick. No, like I can, I can get a good inch and a half here if I really force it in. I tell you, man, I don't measure my dick. I ask for a girl to do. <laughs> oh, wait, cause, okay, it's, it's, it's like this, like you know, um, it, it's okay. So there was a uh, some some shitty ass MTV show I'd never actually watched before, right? But I ended up watching that one episode, and it was kind of clever. It was stupid, kind of clever, right? Right. Um, uh, I don't even know what the stupid what show was. Whatever, it's some like teen like romance piece of shit garbage yeah it's, it was M- mtv after this i'm playing videos so everything they do is just straight up channel who, who fucking watches that channel anymore <laughs> they, they definitely need to change the name from music television music tell the, uh, anyway that's a completely different rant <laughs> fuck mtv uh, so, so what's uh, the deal with mtv right <laughs> <laughs> that's what i should open up with it's like <laughs> <laughs> so this music television thing uh, <laughs> don't play music <laughs> what is up with that uh so uh but anyway, they, yeah, the girl and the guy were talking. The girl was asking him about this uh, this piercing he had and like the head of his dick. Uh, it was like a Prince Albert or a Melbourne or something like that. Fridge tickler. And oh, wait, that's uh, important on your dick. Sorry. Um, and uh, anyway, he was like, I think he asked her if uh, if she and she was like, is it true that you know, that that you have this? And he was like, you know, there's only one way you find out, right? And so you know, ask my mom. So she. <laughs> She gets down. Uh, she gets down there, and of course, she unzips his pants, and uh, and you know, I don't know if he had the piercing or not, but you know, next thing you know, she's like blowing the guy, right? And I'm like, okay, that's that's that's, 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 that's cute, right? You know, obviously, you know, if she's either gonna be like, you know, no thanks, I'm not interested, or she's gonna get down there and pull your dick out, which if she's gonna pull your dick out, then probably she's gonna, you know, you know, if a girl has a pierced tongue, she'll probably suck your dick. <laughs> if a guy has a pierced tongue. He'll probably suck your dick. <laughs> I, that's, that, that, that's, I 
I took that from Chris Rock's No Sex in Champagne Room song. So. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Cornbread. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So, um, so, so I was just put this in the same thing, right? It's like, you know, a great girl's like, you know, how long do you think? Like, I've never bothered to measure it. But if you want to measure it, by all means. If she decides to take you up on the bait, she'll probably suck you a dick. <laughs> if she doesn't, she's like, no thanks. But like, all right, cool. Yeah, no, I've, I've never really bothered with the specifics of it. It's just like, it's sufficient. <laughs> but I don't much, but... I'll tell you one thing. You need to use a sewing a, uh, a sewing tape measure, not a ruler, obviously. <laughs> and then you, then you can't get, get that extra half inch from shaming it into your skin. See, it all comes back around to that. Uh, that's true. Yeah, it's it's like it's like D and D three point five where you're just like you're just like trawling for plus ones to your attack. That's why whenever I'm having sex and everything, you know, it's like <laughs> like we're in the middle of it, like roll for initiative. Bam! <laughs> I get to go first. Oh, <laughs> oh damn, I used my daily <laughs> I went my daily spell. Now you get an attack of opportunity. <laughs> Magic missile. So <laughs> it never misses. <laughs> yeah, no. You're blind now, baby. There's only one time where somebody like really like hassled me for like a number of inches, and that was my roommate. And I found out later that he was gay, and was like, "Okay, that explains that conversation." I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't give him specific numbers then. I'm surprised you let that pass. Let what pass? Uh, you're blind now, baby. Oh shit! I didn't hear you. <laughs> I didn't hear you at all. That we read that on this podcast. Did we? Yeah, when when uh, oh, when right. Riley was with us on the first episode, the pedal falls twice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that guy, we had to break that up into multiple episodes. I think it was like episode three, but it was oh, when uh, Leroy drank Sheikens. Leroy was with us. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and he kept dropping all those end bombs. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we read that, and he just like stared straight ahead, completely defeated for like a full minute. It was beautiful. So, uh, so anyway, <laughs> so I, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm. This, this guy apparently I don't really care what that it got him off or whatever I just like I protected myself I'm good <laughs> so hey, hey. Yeah, like, I, I don't know happened, about where did that guy he pulled that shit head on Rorschach what happened to him he dropped that elevator shit <laughs> <laughs> well you see if I were like actually DMing the situations that are just asking a hypothetical question that it would be like you know later that night you just hear like a scratching at your door <laughs> and it's him again <laughs> and he's just like Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you got one more in you? <laughs> kind of like, like Cheryl from Archer. <laughs> oh. So, uh, so, thank you. so you're good, right? You're yeah, yeah, no, that was that was the hypothetical. Okay. I just I really genuinely wondered how you would respond to that, and uh, you just gave a disturbingly pragmatic answer. So, okay. The least you could have done is try to make it a bit funnier than that. <laughs> I'd hide the evidence. Make sure the body was hidden. <laughs> so I'm going to go to, and this is, once I say this, you're going to be like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have asked you this question. <laughs> Do you remember the dream I, that I told you about the dream I had like three weeks ago? Vaguely? Okay. So for everyone that oh, wasn't yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, God, I <laughs> Don't bring that up when we're talking about somebody getting stabbed and coming. Come on. No, 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 no. Because no. this is going to this is gonna answer, like, your question. If you had thought back about this, you'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to answer this. I know, I know what his answer is going to be. But you're telling me that dream made me think of the hypothetical. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, oh, yeah, that reminds me that Julian brought this up to Chris. So I had a dream, uh, like, a couple, like, maybe three, four weeks ago. And in my dream, I'm, I'm in home, at home, and I don't know what it is that wakes me up, but something wakes me up, there's like a noise. So I leave my bedroom, and there's another room across from, from my bedroom. And uh, down the hall is the, is the door that leads to my basement, where my, the, where my, uh, my media room, family room is, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like the whole man cave thing, right? It's like, I'm, I'm not a caveman, I don't work for Geico, it's like... I just yeah. think of it as the recording studio, because yeah. that's where we record our episodes, much. usually. <laughs> so, uh, and then that's just a little bit, uh, a little bit further down. So I, um, I, I, I'm walk, I come out of the bedroom and it's dark in the house and normally have like a, like a light on the, uh, night light on the kitchen. And so I'm going towards that and I hear a noise coming from, coming from the basement door. And, uh, and it's like someone's trying to open the door and I'm hearing what sounds like my mom's voice, but it's really faint. Like she's going from downstairs. I'm like, like why would my mom be in my house, right? Why would she be downstairs? I'm like, like, well, you know, if she was going to come over, she would have, she would have at least called or something like that. She would just come over without calling. She's got a key, so she would have been able to come in through the front door or the, or the you know, side door. 
Now, she could have come in through the uh, through the back door that leads into the basement and saying, you know, she's got a key for that too, but she wouldn't do that, you know, and of course, they keep the basement door locked, so I'm like, you know, like, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to open the door, right? Except I'm like, I'm like, Mom, is that you? There's no answer. <laughs> but then you're saying kind of like a jiggling of the door now. I'm like, huh. So I go down a little bit further, right? And, um, and I kind of look in the kitchen because uh, cause, since I don't hear any, anything, I'm thinking, well, maybe the voice, maybe the sound was coming from the, uh, from the basement. It was coming from the kitchen. So I go into the kitchen. There's nobody there. I come back and, um, and I get back into the, uh, the, the, the foyer. And, uh, and the light to the basement is now on. I see a light coming on from underneath. And I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of weird, right? And then I see coming out of the, uh, the room across from my bedroom down the hall, like my mom's coming and she's walking towards me, right? And I'm thinking, okay, I heard a noise. It sounded like it was coming from the basement, but, and it was a sound like someone was trying to open the door, but they couldn't. And, and I called her name. Nobody said anything. But now here she is walking towards me. She wouldn't have come into my house without... With, with, without calling him, saying something, I'm gonna drop kick this bitch in the chest. Right? So, so that's what I did. She just started walking towards me, and I just jumped up with both legs, just planted both of them in her chest, and then I woke up. <laughs> so, <laughs> woke up and you realized you'd come. It was a wet dream. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, she, started... <laughs> she was just coming over to, t- to tell you that she lost her voice, and, and you killed her. So I'm just saying, so so some guy that wants to throw hands and everything, go at night, like locking eyes with me, and I've been having a knife in my pocket, hell yeah, I'm stabbing this bitch ass. If I'll kick my mom in the chest and go at night, what do you think I'll do to him? <laughs> oh. uh, so, uh, so we've been going for like 15 minutes and we haven't even got on our top. No, we haven't. And we're not going to get on top of just yet because I have to say something. So uh, this has been the first. I con- know, oh, actually, not the first con since um, since Adventures in Game. This is the second con- second 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 yeah. con since Adventures in Game. But I don't I don't recall seeing this at uh, at GalaxyCon. Yeah, no, it's just a North Carolina thing. Okay, All right. <laughs> I really believe that. And uh, you know, so Makomi and I we go to conventions. I'm actually all the time, right? But we we go to them fairly regularly. Yeah, and we snore, see- crack, and fuck beautiful women. It's great. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. But only in North Carolina. I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, I was going to say fucking North Carolina. But, you know. <laughs> this year we did it because they canceled Swamp Thing. Yeah. So, um, you yeah, because we're all about the green. Uh, but um, uh, we, we, we go to cons and we're used to seeing things like every overweight guy, right, or guy with a bigger build, not really a muscular build, but a bigger build. And, you know, with a little bit of height on him, right, always wants to dress his bane. Yep. You see him all the time, you know, no shirt on, just a vest and then a mask. I'm walking around like, yeah, but you're not bane. You're just a fat guy, you know, and in a vest and a, you know, and a respirator or, or one of those, like, a uh, <laughs> CPAP machine. Yeah, CPAP, right? <laughs> I or, took my dad's CPAP machine. <laughs> or we'll, uh, we'll see, um, you know, see, you know, women of all shapes and sizes, um, you know, wearing Harley Quinn outfits, either from the classic Harley Quinn to the, uh, you know, to the, the, you know, the more recent, uh, you know, Suicide Squad, Harley Quinn, yep. the, uh, the comic book, you know, the different comic book iterations, whatever. I said all shapes and sizes. You know, right? um, some, some of them will actually have the full costume. Some of them will just kind of whatever. Uh, just have an unwashed face and nappy hair. <laughs> And sure thing, Mr. G. <laughs> oh, that's it. For anyone who hasn't, I think we may have talked about this once before, but for anyone who hasn't seen the Batman the Animated episode, Joker's Millions, with <laughs> fake Harley, yes. it's beautiful. I love fake Harley. Uh, and I'd love to see someone cosplay as fake Harley. Of course, the only way you really get that across is with the, uh, is with the Fran Drescher laugh and then the, the, uh, the, the, the accent, but... Right. But, um... You know, and we, we've seen them for years. Oh, yeah. Years. You know, without fail, every con you see that. We haven't seen the, we haven't seen the Banes as often, right? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's kind of dying out. Yeah, and, of course, you always see Jokers of every shape and size running the gamut from, like, the Cesar Romero's, which aren't as often, through, like, you know, Killing Joe. And one thing we haven't seen very much of is, is the Suicide Squad one. I think it's just you and I, the only people that like that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, of course, you do see a lot of Killing Joke ones. Oh, um, awesome. yeah. yeah. 
But, uh, and we, you know, we see them like, ah, oh, you know, okay. We're, we're kind of used to seeing them. It's, it's expected. This con, though, we saw, and I don't, and I think both of us equally grew tired and just, just like, I don't want to see this ever again. Yeah. Just at one con. And I think it probably happened within one day. Yeah, it was halfway through the first day. We were like, this is a problem. And then one more walked by and we were like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> Fat Thor cosplay. Fat Thor cosplay. And it's any, it's every heavy set guy with sometimes with real beard, some other fake beard, <laughs> Lebowski robe on, and it's just like Fat Thor walking around. Pajama and, pants, fingerless gloves, the works, you yeah. know, the Wayfair shades, and not not Ray Bans, but just like whatever shit you get from like a dog store. Some of them went all out to where like their 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 natural Fat Thorness was hanging out from underneath the shirt, <laughs> uh, yeah. and it's it's like it. You know, we, 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 you know, we see cosplays, we see, you see a lot of really good cosplays, a lot of, you know, not so good cosplays. Um, you know, and sometimes, you know, you want to cosplay, you want to celebrate the character you like, maybe you have a lot of money, maybe you don't have, like, the talent to, you know, sew a bunch of stuff together. You kind of put together what you have and, you know, and it's cool. But this is one of those, like, I can do this with what, what I have laying around the house, yep. you know? It was like, like someone did, like, a DIY Fat Thor, like, you know, on YouTube. You know, here's how to be Fat Thor in like, in, in like one minute, 30 seconds. And, and it was... He takes the glasses out, puts them on, he's like, there we go. Right. It, it was like, it was, it, it was, it was so often and everybody was Fat Thor. And I was like, wow. I, I think it is fair to say that we saw upwards of dozens of Fat Thors. I don't think that's an exaggeration or hyperbole. Or no, no, it wasn't. Uh, we saw literally dozens of them. And not putting down cosplayers was like this was this was just such a like I said it, it felt like such a quick easy hit for people who want to cosplay but 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 don't really want to because they don't want to like I'm not going to kind of dress it up like that but I can be Fat Thor right. I'm not really cosplaying right but I am it's so it's, it's you know and well and yeah and that was like that was my joke about it is you know somebody going up and be like oh hey that's a really nice in-game Thor cosplay he's like I'm oh, a cosplay. <laughs> It rolled out of bed and came to the con like this. I mean, that, like, that, that's what it felt like. It was, uh, it, yeah, it was, it, it, and like I said, we just, we, we were tired of seeing them, like, almost immediately. And it was, like I said, it wasn't like, well, here's one, here's one, here's one. It was, like, back to back to back. Oh, yeah. Just Fat Thor's all over the place. And you know what? Not once did I see Fat Thor in battle regalia. No. Not with the braided beard, not with the, not with the armor, none of that. And, like... That, that's the shit I would want to see is like Thor dual wielding the axe and the hammer in battle regalia and great and I would say okay there's there's passion for the character in that like they, they put some effort into that but it doesn't feel like anybody put effort into that it feels like they were like I'm going to Heroes Con wait a minute I like McDonald's <laughs> I have a robe I have sunglasses I'll go with Thor was that the, the thing I told you just like uh it's like, honey, you can't sit there in the lazy boy eating, you know, eating Big Macs all day. It's like, you know, you're getting out of shape. No, I'm just working on my Fat Thor cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we did see one very well done. And, you know, um, Thor Ragnarok, you know, end of movie. Oh, missing, yeah. Missing eye and everything. And I say very well done. Obviously, this guy was like, you know, he did skip leg day or arm day or any other day. Yeah, and he actually couched his own eye out. Yeah, that was, that was impressive. But yeah, no, I mean, that guy was like jacked and handsome. Yeah. And, 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 plus, and his outfit, I mean, he wasn't just like, like the, some of the guys we see, like, I'm going to go as uh, as I guess, uh, Ryu from Street Fighter. Right. I'm going to put on some karate pants and no shirt and a headband. <laughs> now I'm Ryu. It's like, okay, I get it. You got some pecs. You want to show them off. Yeah, this guy, he, he had a pretty legitimately good costume. I, I, I don't think it was store bought or anything. So, uh,. So yeah, I just 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 me ranting about that because it's just like, oh man, hey, you know, we've got love for all kinds of cosplayers, you know. It's yeah, you know, obviously some we, we do get get a little sick of, and sometimes I'm looking, I'm like, I'm not sure if that was really the right cosplay for you. <laughs> uh, you know, well, and I know we've talked about it on the Corova Game Bar, which as of this recording, the episode hasn't been posted yet. But I know we talked about like one of the. Uh, one of the local cons that we attended had a cosplay thing, and like you know, she was she was an attractive girl, but her body type was just kind of the opposite of what she was cosplaying as, and things like that. I feel like that's probably not going to be a very popular episode, but 
Yeah, it is, it, I mean, even now, as you say that, it, it sounds like you're like, like, like trying to like body shame her. Well, yeah, um, and, and I don't mean that at all. I think she was an attractive girl, but it just, like, I, you, you should play to your strengths, I think. Like, 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 if a white guy came up and he was dressed as Black Lightning, he'd be like, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you love the character. That's all cool in the gang, right? But not quite sure it's the right one for you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing, where it's like, it's not that it's a bad costume, it's not that I'm in, by any means body shaming her, it's just that it, you could play to your strengths a little bit more. So, yeah, that was, that was also the con where she was, like, table right next to us. Yeah. And, shit, who was she? I think it was Plastic Girl. So, oh, she was, yeah, she yeah, was yeah, showing yeah. a lot of leg and a lot of butt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. you, like, you mocked me for staring. It was like, she's right next to me, standing up, so her butt is just, like, right at high level. Of course yeah. I'm going to stare. Yeah, I remember that. And the thing is that the, like, for the, um, the, the look, the face look with the hair and the glass and everything, that, mm-hmm. that was, you know, perfect. Oh, yeah. But the, the rest of it just, like, it didn't quite fit. Like, she would have made a great Elastigirl. girl. She had that kind of look. Yeah, that would have been, it would have been a great Elastigirl. girl. She would have been a phenomenal Elastigirl. girl. That's the thing. It's like, but no, it was like, it was, it was good. <laughs> but I, I digress. You know, I kind of just want to keep talking about like conventions. Honestly, we're we're uh, half an hour into this. And <laughs> I, I don't feel like um, what we wanted to talk about would really have justice done to it. Well, you know, they actually have no idea what it was we wanted to talk about. So, yeah, and I'm just gonna keep it as a big damn secret for them right now. I think. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, we uh, we to say we go to a lot of cons, and you know, we. Yeah, if if you're if you're a comic book pop culture, even we do comic cons, but they, it's not all comic cons. And I like the fact that that it's kind of open to be a little more geek pop culture focused, while still uh, geek pop culture accessible, while still staying focused on comic books and uh, comic book peripherals. Let's say you know, yeah. um, and because you know you know you do have things like you've got like cons that are devoted to just one thing, like you've got like. Like Firefly cons, like you know, Brown Coach Unites, that kind of stuff. You got Star Trek cons. You got you've got a, you've got horror movie conventions. You know, and those are all you know very specific kind of niche things. Um, so you know, it's we, we like going to those things and um, and they're 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 fun. I mean, you get to meet people of all different you know walks of life. And I said it doesn't sound right. You get to meet all different kinds of creators, whether they're comic book creators, you know, um, small press, indie professionals, people that have been in the business for years, you know, you know, people that have created some of the things that, you know, that, that you, uh, you know, that, that you like or love or have seen, you know, a lot of these people, they create, they've created characters that you've seen in TV shows or whatnot, you know, don't even know who they are, but it's like, you know, they've they created that stuff, and it's nice to kind of meet them and talk to them and, and that kind of stuff, and then see just like, you know, you've got your vendors all around that have tons of stuff that you've just never seen before, didn't even know existed, and it's oh, like, oh my goodness, we've some awesome shit this year. Oh yeah. yeah, and then you know, for us, we were able to we were able to hit um, a couple of a uh, couple of places had some uh, fifty cent comics. So just just box and box and boxes of fifty cent comics. I got like eighty issues of Serum. I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, which is always great because you know it's like a lot of times it's uh, sometimes it's just overrun stuff, and then a lot of times it's uh, it's just older stuff. You know that books that people don't want. Yeah, but you know well. Well, nobody yeah. wants Cerebus but me. <laughs> well, as it looks at the mainstream, you know, a lot of people just say, like, I don't know what this is. I, I'm not really looking for it. It doesn't really have any, like, like big value. The older books that just never really took off in value. Or maybe they, maybe you look it up and they say it's worth five bucks, but no one's coming and asking for it. So, no one's coming and asking for it. You know, what's the difference between five bucks and 50 cents, right? Right, yeah. At least, at least at 50 cents, you got to put that in your pocket. Uh, so, you yeah, know, we were able to hit up those and get a lot of, uh, a lot of good stuff. And then uh, it's fun just to find, like, old, like, I pulled out. I pulled out um, for this one. That guy he had a quarter box. Yeah, yeah. Which was which is fantastic. I pulled out the Marvel Comics adaptation of Crawl. It's two issues. <laughs> now I already have the Marvel Comic Comics adaptation of uh, of Dune, which is also two issues. I've got the adaptation of The Adventures of Buck and Bonsai Across the Eighth Dimension, which is also two issues. There's a Blade Runner one, which I don't have, which is also two issues. Oh, and then they had a Crawl. So I was like, dude, Crawl. I'm gonna get Crawl, right? That's um, awesome. Guess who? Uh, guess who drew Crow? Um, I want to say Al Williamson. No, no, but Al Williamson. I mean, so, there's there's a lot of industry professionals. Like someone, just, someone that we talked about, and I talked about uh, specifically. That's a long ago. Um, you 
talk about a lot of Marvel guys, dude. So we had someone talk about the podcast we did with uh, with Webwalk. Oh shit! Um, oh no! I don't remember who you said. You, you spent a lot of time talking about guys who you didn't hate. Um, ah, Barry Winter Smith. No. <laughs> Shima? No, no, I like they like Shima. I like uh, I think I like Sal more than I like John. I even I love them both. Um, Sal was pretty cool. He he was the one who did the how to draw comics the normal way. So I yeah. like I fell in love with this stuff with that. Um, no, I I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Brett Levins. Brett Levins. Yeah, I like Brett Levins. I know you guys do. Yeah. And and you know we had the whole thing. It was like I don't I don't dislike him, but his work um on. When I when I, I guess I first really recognized who he was as an artist, uh, was on the New Mutants after I you know come, come out of the uh, uh, I think of Sienkiewicz and um, I was trying to think of who it was that that did that before for him and then of course that led into the uh, into the the Liefeld run. Yeah. But yeah, I just uh, and I, you know I give I give Brett Levins a lot of I think at the time a lot of flack and I don't really think it was him so much as the uh, the story at the time I wasn't really feeling. It was during the fall of the mutants, and there was some weird like bird creature that had teamed up with them, and and then you had the uh, these uh, these weird people that were uh, who were they some kind of mutant hunters that were trying to kill them. They wore these big, huge, like clunky green suits with a smiley face for like uh, <laughs> like they had these big helmets that came with like dome helmets uh, over their heads. And they had a big smiley face on it. And it was just like. Uh, and and so I think I think when I I, I attribute Brett Blevins with that and, and I shouldn't because it was like I just didn't like those characters. Plus that's also when they killed Doug Ramsey and like Warlock was in. And I was like, oh my goodness. See, like my introduction was during that podcast and I Googled him and it pulled up a bunch of his fantasy art. He does like really nice pencil fantasy art with like kind of cartoony proportions, but it's like these these like naked chicks with these fantasy creatures. It's really cool. I really like his art. So, and not because I'm a horn dog. Not just because. I certainly didn't masturbate to it. Over and over again. <laughs> More than once. Just once. So, uh, so yeah, so Brett Blevins is the art for that. And, you know, and the thing is, I've never, I think I've seen parts of Crow. I know it's a bad movie. And I remember, you know, seeing, like, the, uh, you know, the, like, TV spots and stuff like that, trailers. Like, I've watched part of it, you know, I... I think the only really good thing about Crawl is it's got that uh, that cute little redhead in it and uh, Liam Neeson. But you know, and, oh and yeah, it, he is a cute little redhead. Yeah, he is. He is. It's just the accent that does it for me. <laughs> Liam, you want to come on the show? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were we were in bed one night. He's like, I have a very specific set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> Zip. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, but, and and the, the the Cyclops, as bad as the Cyclops is, you know, it, it's for the time. It's not that bad. Have you ever seen? So, have you ever yeah. seen Crawl? They know what I'm talking about. No, I, I don't. So yeah, so you know, what, once once this podcast is over, we'll we'll pull the trailer. And you can watch it. All right. The trailer looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Crawl. Crawl. Yeah. Um. So yes, I was able to pick that up from the quarter bin and a couple other things. Yeah, and we, uh, we found some real gems in the trade paperback section too. Well, oh yeah, I got that. Uh, that was like one of several of the uh, uh, first issues of the '90s. It's this collection of like all these like number one issues of books from the '90s. Oh, yeah, Marvel's '90s. Yes. Yeah. And the one I happened to pick up, they only had one, so it's not like I was cherry picking. It's not like I went looking for this. They only had one, right? And the one I happened to pick up had X Force number one in it. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and, it, and the thing is that night when we were talking about it, I was talking to about it and I was, we were talking about it he's like oh it's got that scene where he cuts the guy's hand off and it looks he's like you can't tell like like which is the thumb <laughs> and which is the pinky and I was like yeah. that's exactly what I said like the first panel you showed me it was like look at this shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we found some great stuff and like, like I said I got to you know got to talk to Stan Sakai I got to talk to Sergio of course got to talk to Chris Schweitzer again I talked to him every hero is gone he's a great guy great artist yeah, he's fantastic Nice. Uh, we had a really nice talk with uh, Francesco Francavilla, yeah, and uh, he's a super nice guy, and he's had some really nice things to say about our work. Yeah, and uh, 
Uh, dude, that, man, that, uh, that Captain America, like, poster he had. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And if, yeah. You know, what, what if I had the extra hundred dollars to spend, and if I if I knew I had a place to put it, I would have been all, all, all over that. Oh, man. If, if I, I had the money for it, I'd have, like, made it. <laughs> and then that uh, that that Alien Twenty had, yeah, which yeah. Was so which was so nice. And no, I wanted that. There's a uh, a Batman Red Rain statue that was made. It's an old statue. He said it came out like four years ago. And he had, I guess, I think he said it was his copy, which is a limited edition one. It was four hundred bucks, but it's Batman. Like you know, it's oh my goodness, it's beautiful, so beautiful. And I have the Kelly Jones Red Rain one. So putting that one next to the other one would just, uh, it would have been. But yeah, yeah I didn't have four hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, it'd be even more to say, like, not that I just have one, but I have Francesco Francavilla's like version. Yeah, I mean, yeah. his his personal copy, but uh, <laughs> would have been really nice. But again, that's four hundred dollars. I don't have. Yeah, yeah. And no, his, his stuff. I mean, yeah, you, you get what you pay for. I mean, they, they were just like prints. You know, most people just do their prints on like eleven by seventeen glossy stock paper. And he had like really nice like rag paper. Oh, these are poster size too. Like poster size wouldn't have torn up really easily. Like you didn't, you'd have had to have intentionally tried to put some damage on that thing. Oh yeah, and just beautiful, beautiful work. He, he's primarily like known for his colors, but man, that line art and that inking—he's just a fantastic artist. An incredibly nice guy too. Oh yeah, just like so personable, so genuine. Like I mean, you, you can usually tell when you give people like a sample of your art or something when they're just kind of BSing you, just saying nice things just to like get you out of their hair. It's like, oh yeah, uh, nice line work. Yeah. And versus like people like genuinely pointing out things on the page, and you know that that's what always makes me feel good at a con. Yeah, because uh, you know you introduced me to um, that Marvel artist last year's con. Damn it, I always blank on his name. I feel bad about it. Which one? Um, the guy uh, you. You and he have like emailed in the past. I, I talked to him. You emailed. You talking about uh, Brandon Peterson? Yes, Brandon Peterson. Yeah. God damn, I don't know why I can never remember his name, but like he he was looking through uh, some copies of my mini comics and he recognized that I was using Wally Wood's twenty two panels that always work. And just like he just immediately pointed that out on one page, and I was like, nobody catches that. Nobody recognizes that I'm actually using the Wally Woods layouts on those. And he, he got it, and I was so excited. But that also shows that he was that he was really genuinely looking at it too. Oh yeah, yeah. And he was like paying attention. And it's like, dude, hey. that was awesome. I never feel like people are actually reading stuff. You know, he's he's always been such a such a nice guy to me, um, and he's always just been just just very genuine. And it makes me feel bad that I don't have a shop near me now where I can that I can buy because he's doing um he's on the uh, the action comics I think he did a Superman book with uh, oh, by by Bendis. Yeah. And uh, and it's like I've. Even even books I really didn't have any interest in, if he's doing it, I still buy it. You know, his I, work is beautiful. Yeah, you know, he was when he was doing us uh, in humans for a while. I snagged that up because you know, I didn't really have any interest in humans. And I, I think I was being done by Al Ewing, and I do like Al Ewing's uh, work. So it's like honestly, we're now thinking about maybe I should go back and like try to pick him up to read it. But he was doing those, and uh, and I got it just because of his art, uh, just because he was doing it. And then uh, but the Superman stuff, yeah, I like this anyway. You know, I know a lot of people don't. They want to say a bunch of different things about it. And that, that's cool. But, you know, I like Bendis. I always have. Because, again, he's a guy that, you know, for the first time, I've, I've only met him twice. But the first time I met him, he was straightforward and cool. And we had a really good conversation. When I met him again, he was still very nice. And, uh, of course, he didn't remember me meeting him. Actually, he, he kind of remembered me meeting him because it was, uh, it was a very specific time. And we had this very specific conversation. And he was like, okay, yeah, I, I kind of remember that. And we're talking about a difference of like twenty years too. You right. Know? Yeah. So I wouldn't expect him to be like, "Bing, night ball," <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, he has uh, you know, like a very, very cool guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like it's always nice when you have these people that uh, you know people we kind of um, I don't really want to say look up to, but it's people that we really admire. Yeah. And uh, you know, they're kind of people that make you want to be in this for us, make us want to be in this industry. And, you know, they kind of make us want to do what, you know, what we're trying to do. And then they make it so... They make you feel like an equal. Right. Which is, like, crazy because, you know, somebody like Stan Sakai, it's like, you are worlds above me. <laughs> you you have done things with sequential art that I will never be able to do. And never be able to even approach doing. And to, like, genuinely compliment my work. It's like... <laughs> yeah. I, you know, Bill Tucci the same way. Oh, yeah. And God, I love Billy. Yeah, and she's just like, yeah. 
Hey, Bill. You know, after you know, he came, he would go over there and say, "Hey, how you guys been?" Blah blah. And he's like, "You know, you know, what you guys, what you know?" And after the show, he's like, "Oh, well, you know what? We're gonna be over here." It's like, "Yeah, come on by and you hang out." It's like that kind of stuff is just. It's, it's like, all right, yeah, like we're not being treated like the leeches we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's not like like you know, it's not like this like you know, uh, like like private club, you know, like the. Uh, <laughs> Like, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm in the gold club key card at, you know, at the airport, so I get to go in the special lounge. Yeah. So, sorry, but to join us, you need to wear your special blazer. <laughs> sorry, Jim, you got to have big hats to come in here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's cool. And, you know, it, and you, you, it's nice to kind of also meet other people that are you know, just like us. Yeah. That are, that are trying and putting stuff out. Yeah, we met some great indie creators this time. Yeah. It's been a long time since we got some really like network in fellow Indians, you know. And I had a really good conversation with uh, with James DeMatteis too. Oh yeah, that was uh, and you you weren't there unfortunately. Yeah, I wasn't. Uh, but uh, we were talking about you know his work on uh, Justice League because I was I was like you know what made you want to take that route with with Justice League? You know, for people that don't know the Justice League book in, in the eighties when they had you know. Batman and Blue Beetle and Booster Gold and Guy Gardner and I think Doctor Light was on there for like a hot second. Um, then he had to leave and make Mega Man. Uh, different Doctor Light, and female uh-huh. Doctor Light. Um, that's okay though. Oh, oh. female Doctor Light. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then you had uh, Shazam was on there also for a short period of time. Uh, uh, see, Mister Miracle. Yeah, I love that. Those the scenes with Mister Miracle. Oh yeah, with Big Barda. Yeah. Yeah, you showed me those. Those are great. It's like, it's like. I was like, I don't mind you. It's like, what do you mean you don't mind your duty? Well, Batman says, what do you mean Batman says? He's like, we'll have to take our turn. And, you know, Martian Manhunter and uh, Black Canary, all that stuff is just fantastic. But we, I asked, like, what made you take that ride? He's like, it wasn't like we set out to do this, but we were just kind of showing a slice of life, and it just became humorous. But it was like, they were still, it was a very serious book. You know, we, we weren't, like, you know, making it a, a, like a jokey book. It was like, we were still doing that, but we were... Their regular book, which is kind of making this uh, this kind of uh, this uh, kind of like humor in it that was just very natural. It just kind of came out. He talked about you know like he's doing this, uh, Giffen's doing that kind of like the, the plotting. He's doing the scripting and just how the two of them played off each other. And he's like they would talk about the level of trust yeah. that there was between them, like you know, and just unintentional ways that they were kind of like working with each other um, on story ideas and plots without even you know. Without saying anything, like, you know, oh, I did this one thing, and he just kind of saw it and picked up on it, and then he kind of played it out a little bit further, and it's like, oh, okay. And uh, it, was, it was really, it was like, so it was kind of cool just, like, let's sort of talk about that, and I talked about uh, some of the things that I liked, like, uh, for example, the uh, if you've never read the uh, the first trade, and he also picked up the fact, he's like, this is the first first printing trade, and I'm like, yeah, I've had that for a long time, and I've read it, like, over and over again. Um, and, uh, but he... Uh, one of the, if you haven't read it, the very first, um, the very first trade um, for that, or the, yeah, the collects like the first seven issues or so, seven to ten issues, really good. But there's this one part with the uh, the gray man, and uh, it's a really really good story. And I talked about that this whole soliloquy that the gray man does about his life and kind of you know how he's there's no enjoyment in his life. He's not happy. He's not sad. It's just everything's just gray. And uh, and all that, and it's just he's got this nice soliloquy. And I was talking about that. He's like, he's like, yeah, the Great Man's a really good character. And uh, he's like, I was like, I don't know why we didn't do more with him. He's like, we brought him back for this one thing, but he's like, he's a really good character to use. And he's like, and you know, we, we should do more with him. Yeah. So, but yeah, we had a really really good conversation with him about you know about the books and stuff. He's got actually a, a, a writing workshop up in New York uh, later this uh, this year. So it's, uh, it's like a weekend. It's like 450 bucks. I'm like, oh, man. Oh, that's I, pricey, but it'd be worth it. Man. Oh, yeah. yeah. It'd be really worth it. So, but yeah, it's just like, like you know, talking to him and stuff like that. You get, this is the kind of stuff we get to do. Uh, on top of, like, geeking out and looking at, that, you know, cool things like, oh, my God, look at that. Look at that. Look at oh, that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. And uh, I, I think we have to bring up one of the coolest people we got to meet at GalaxyCon. And had a very extensive conversation with, and that is Dana Snyder. Oh, Jesus! So not a not a comic personality, but uh, a very well known name uh, amongst people who were fans of Adult Swim. Yeah, Dana Snyder. He was on uh, Your Pretty Face Is Going to Hell, which I got to talk about just a little bit because that was not a uh, that was not a show that I had any interest in whatsoever. I looked at you know some of the uh, 
like the little TV spots for it. And I'm like, this looks really stupid. <laughs> um, and I'm like, and I, I this, I, just sometimes adults one will have like some shit. I, people love Tim and Eric. That's me. I'm, I'm glad you do. I can't stand Tim and Eric. I do not like anything about it. I don't think they're funny at all. Fuck and, Tim and Eric. Okay. And, and, and when they, when he does a little like rosy cheeks to look like some like you know, I don't know, little, little Lord Lord Fauntleroy, like I, I, I just oh, I, I don't like it. Yeah. Um, um, if, if you like Tim and Eric, it's decent taste. Yeah. So, uh, but if you like us and Tim and Eric, then um, you know, hey, uh, hey, I'm glad you like us. Thank you. Uh, but <laughs> but you know, taste. <laughs> they do have they've had some shows on there that just I haven't really quite hit me as like something I'm like oh. Yeah, no. And I thought Your Pretty Face was going to be one of those shows until I, I ended up watching the episode by accident. Um, and uh, and I was like, okay, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And it's kind of a different show and it's funny. But Dana Snyder's on there. He's not the main character. He's just one of the people in hell. Yeah. And it's funny. The, the episode I saw that really, I think, I ended up watching two that one night. And the, and the one that really kind of like keyed in for me was when they, all the people in, in hell, they were doing this thing. And, it, 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 it broke the third wall, not just like speaking to the audience, but they broke the third wall like amongst themselves where they were like, you're getting pissed off because like the one guy wasn't wearing the red makeup to show he was a demon in hell. <laughs> right. And then and then they're like, well, he's not wearing, I'm not going to wear the red makeup anymore either. But they were still like playing their characters while complaining about like not wearing the red makeup for a sh- <laughs> and, and it was it, it was kind of funny. That's uh, really meta. <laughs> Yeah, so it was uh, it was kind of cool, and I, and I don't watch it consistently. Um, I still just kind of like you know, I, if it's on, I'll catch an episode and I won't turn away. Yeah. But it actually is a pretty funny show. I mean, we met Dana Snyder, oh, and, yeah. which I mean, he's best known for his role as Master Shake from Lock and Team Hunger Force. Yes, I mean he's a great guy. I mean, I was I guess I was kind of expecting him to like act like Master Shake yeah. <laughs> because I mean, like the voice. It's not like he's putting on a voice when he does Master Shake. He's just a little more spastic when he talks. Yes. But otherwise, he still sounds exactly slightly the same. higher pitched too. Yeah, just a little bit higher pitched. But I mean, he was just like he was a super chill guy, and uh, we we gave him a copy of our most recent book, and he was like he was what like, really cool to talk to. We really enjoyed it. We talked about how he's uh, he was uh, another guy we're working on our uh, comic book as well, and I think that he's going to be at the next Galaxy Con in Raleigh, and uh, and said. Uh, yeah, they, they were hoping to have their book out by that time. Yeah, yeah, they wanted to do some kind of activity book, right? That's something, yeah. Yeah, so uh, be- best of luck with that, Dana, for sure. But uh, Best of luck, I'm sure you get it done with, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't mean to sound condescending. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> it came out wrong. And I told about my favorite episode of Appetit Hunger Force. One oh, of my yeah. favorite episodes, The Drizzle. The Drizzle. The Drizzle, and he, he gave us some BTS on that. And oh, yeah. Told, told us some cool little like, background stories on that, which was awesome. The Drizzle and Frat Aliens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, but Dad owns a dealership. Dad totally owns a dealership. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've, I've, we've referenced so many times before. So many times. Like, sure. you know, we're freaking tired of it. Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> and they call it DP, D to the B, Donkey Punch, Donkey Punch <laughs> Rello. <It's just laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And you see, every time I hear you do the whole Donkey Punch thing, I think about it. PJ and Squee, <laughs> Donkey Dong Dog, <laughs> Gang Bang Greg. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We're terrible people. We've got yeah, the worst are. taste in the world. <laughs> but yeah, no, he was he was like super cool to talk to. But like, yeah, well, like we we, we talked to him about like about like produ- producing and printing books and stuff, and like sort of our approach to it. And, just this, this, all kinds of things. It's just, it's so cool to have like real genuine conversations with these people. Yeah. And it, it really, I mean, it really is nice that you can, when you can just sit down and just be like, because it's, and I had a conversation with, uh, with you and a couple of somebody else about it. It's like, it's kind of intimidating when you walk up to these people. It's like, but it shouldn't be. They're just regular people. And while this is a big deal for you, this means nothing to them. Yeah. I mean, it's not in a bad way, but they're not going to remember you. They're doing their, you're saying them, right? But they're seeing like 200 other people that day. Right. And right. then, you know, the next day they're going to see 200 other people. They're going to go to like another con. They're going to see another two or 300 people. And they're going to do that, you know, throughout the year. So if you see them again the following year, right, that means, I mean, it's not that that, that they didn't play out, enjoy meeting you and saying, hey, I've connected with a fan in some way. Or at least thank you for, for you know, liking my work. But it doesn't mean as much to them as it does to you. Yeah. But, yeah. but you're just, there's just like, oh, man, I get to meet this person. 
and it's like, wow, it's like, but why? It's, it's not like, like, even if I leave a bad impression, I'd be like, that guy, <laughs> that guy, that guy, you know? Aren't you the Pac-Man guy? Yeah, no, that was some total ass. Like, aren't you the guy that said I look like Carl Weathers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did yes, you tell I, that story on the podcast? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we did or not, but, uh, you know, <laughs> because, like, I know we've told the Ralph Maggio story on the podcast. You fucking look like Carl Weathers. I mean, <laughs> that's not a bad thing. I'm sorry if you, if you, we, we should explain who you think looks like Carl Weathers. <sighs> okay. <laughs> we should no, tell no, 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 you tell the story. I'm not telling the story anymore. I, I'm trying, I'm blanking on his name. My, Michael Dorn. Michael Dorn, that's right. Yeah, Michael Dorn, uh. He was the voice of Goliath in the Gargoyles no, cartoon. No, he was, he was the voice of, of uh, what was what? it that, that's, uh, Stone Cold? No, what? Cold Stone. Cold Stone? I thought he was Goliath. It's been no, a, dude, I haven't no, seen no. Gargoyles in like 22 years. Oh my god, really? Yes, really. It's been at Keith, least 22 years. Keith David was the voice of Goliath. Okay. You know, reverse giraffe? Excuse me, all the hell. <laughs> he also he also plays a president on Rick and Morty. Oh yeah. Keith <laughs> David. He, he's, he's, the, uh, he's the General Halsey in uh, Armageddon. You know, uh, it's like, you know, yeah, $200 billion on defense, and we entrust the world to a bunch of retards, and I wouldn't trust with a potato gun. <laughs> that guy. Adam Damn, I'm going to have to censor that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a direct quote from the movie. That's a direct quote from the movie. <laughs> wait, wait, what do you, what do you, have, what do you have, to, have to have to censor? <laughs> you know. Oh, I, it's like, I'm not, I'm not uh, making fun of the differently, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> differently abled. I'm just saying that that's right. <laughs> Well, I think people just take offense to that, Rick. Well, that's retarded. <laughs> that's a direct quote, by the way. <laughs> okay, so I got I got my roles mixed up. I haven't watched Gargoyle since I was like six, okay? Gargoyle is such an awesome show. It's really, really good. I remember liking it a lot, but I just I, I haven't I haven't caught up with it. Yeah. I still haven't watched Breaking Bad, okay? It's 2019 and I still haven't finished watching Breaking Bad. I haven't even started. Yeah, well, you know, it's because you suck. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. But yeah, no. So, um, so we we go up and we meet up. Oh, I, I don't know why I fixated on that one role. He's also Worf. I guess I guess that would probably have been a better role to go for. <laughs> He's Worf too. Um, <laughs> for those that that didn't or, or did watch Gargoyles, maybe don't remember it. Stone Cold. Uh, I mean, Cold Stone, like like the Ice Cold Place. Cold, Cold Stone was the was one of the so. Bunch of gargoyles, they 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 um they come to life at night, but during the day they turn to stone, just right? like real ones, right? And uh, when all this shit went down way back in medieval times and everything, a bunch of them were destroyed when they were in their stone form. Cold Stone was one of those, but but the guy that brings the other guys, the other uh, gargoyles to life, Xanatos, he had found a bunch of the the um, the remnants of the of the stone gargoyles and had pieced Stone Cold back together as best he could. And, the, and what he couldn't piece back together because um, he couldn't find the pieces, he um, he replaced with like with metal parts. So when Stone Cold came to life, he's kind of cybernetic looking, but he does is that be like machinery. It's just the other parts that are missing are replaced with metal. Yeah, that's cool. I forgot about that character. Yeah, but yeah, so you know we, we go up and we meet him and we're talking to him, and, you know, ch- chit chatting mostly about his role as Worf. And then Turk pulls up a picture of him from what film? Is no, it no, I didn't. He had a lady to his oh. on the counter. Yeah, <laughs> was, yeah, he has a stack of pictures, like for people to, to purchase for him to sign. And uh, <laughs> Turk just picks up this one from what film was it? It was from the TV show Chips. From from the TV show Chips, and you know he's he's kind of grown his hair out a little bit. He's got like the '80s cop stash going on. And he had a fro. He had a fro. It was a uh, late seventies. Oh, it was the late seventies. Okay. Late 70s. Uh, and and Turk like turns it around to him and goes. So has anybody ever told you that you look like Carl Weathers in this picture? And he just, like, pauses from his Sudoku puzzle, like, slowly looks up at us and goes, No. No, he he, 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 he goes, No. (laughs) And the conversation died. (laughs) That conversation blew up in the hangar, okay? (laughs) Turk was just like, Okay. (laughs) <laughs> that was that was about it. We just kind of left. And he went back to his little crossword puzzle on his Kindle, <laughs> and that was it. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I it, I wasn't trying to offend him. It was just hey, okay. So I wasn't trying to offend Ralph Macchio. But, yeah. Okay, so how, <laughs> how many times? How many times am I walking by and everything? And people are like, 
dude, you look like you look like Snoop Dogg. You look like Cat <laughs> Williams, right? And I'm like, okay, first off, I'm not as tall or as lanky as Snoop Dogg, right? And second, I, I'm not some fucking midget. I'm not Cat Williams, all right? I'm not fucking Cat Williams. You see how you get you're getting triggered here? <laughs> Because I mean, because Cat Williams is a little guy. I'm not a little guy. I'm like a big hulking brute, but I'm not a little guy, right? So in one podcast, we have now dropped the word retard and midget. <laughs> little person. Little oh, person. oh, nice, nice retroactive fix. I'll, edit, okay, okay, I'll Cat, edit that right in. Cat Williams is not a quote unquote defined <laughs> little person, but he is a shorter man. Okay. <laughs> So, like, like if they were gonna make a black X Men, he could play Wolverine. He's a shorter guy. <laughs> Plus, he got his ass beat by that like eighth grader. You ever seen that video on YouTube where like a fourteen year old kid kicked his ass? It's, That's it's, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm not making fun. Of, I'm just saying, I'm not him. I'm not him. I don't even come close. Just because I got long hair, I'm not a black guy. Call me Ryan O'Neal. I'm super fly. Damn it. I mean, I don't care. But don't call me Cat Williams. I'm like, damn it, man. I mean, you know, no one ever calls me Andre 3000, but probably because I'm not anywhere near as good looking as as as, as, as you know Andre 3000. But I'm just saying that, like, dude, it's not a black guy. It, anyway, uh, but I didn't mean. I, I, I never mind the celebrities that compare me to because everybody calls me either Mickey from Natural Born Killers or Heisenberg, and I can live with both of those. Yeah, but I'm just saying. So I mean, I'm like, okay, look, may, maybe maybe he auditioned for the role of Apollo Creed, and he didn't get it. Right? He's always been kind of bitter about that. Not my fault, you know. I mean, maybe you know, maybe he, he like you know, then that we did get Apollo Creed. Maybe he you know. Yeah, he auditioned for like you know some other role and everything that went to Carl Weathers. Like he was like, okay, I, I can I can be in, in Predator. It's like, nope. <laughs> and it's like you know that went to Carl Weathers. He's like, okay, well you know I definitely could be an Action Jackson, right? <laughs> nope. And then he's like, you know, oh, man, fuck Carl Weathers. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, that's not my fault. I mean, I was just saying, hey, anybody said that? Because I, mean, I get that kind of shit all the time. You get that shit all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just. Dude, I mean, so so since we've dropped some politically incorrect words, can I quote something you said at the last con that had me falling out of bed laughing? Because you were talking about Friday the 13th. Uh, I don't remember what it was. So I'm hesitant to say yes. If you know, I, I do trust you to I'll, a certain extent. So I'll, I'll say yes. it. And if you deem it something I need to edit, I'll edit it out. Just like all the shit I say on the Karoba Game Bar. <laughs> okay. You never edit that stuff out. You don't. You always lie. You gotta go and watch the episode. And you're like, you said you were gonna edit this. <laughs> no, there will come a day when I legitimately forget, and it'll be bad. <laughs> I didn't say help us. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you were talking about Friday the Thirteenth, and you were talking about how irresponsible Jason's mother was because she let her son go to the lake unsupervised, and he was a retarded, a retarded mongoloid who can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to fucking drive here, man. I'm about to drop the phone. <laughs> yeah, return of my You can't swim good. There we go. I managed to get it out, but I got tears pouring down my face. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so we, so we were talking. We were talking about Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, I understand. And I'm just saying, like, it's not fair for all these kids who have died. Because she sent her, her, you know, uh, special needs child. Because if you've seen the pictures of Jason in the lake drowning, right? <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he's missing teeth. His head's little, little bigger than, than average. He's Probably got like, a large forehead. Right. He's got like one eye up here, one eye down there, right? You don't send a kid like that to just a regular <laughs> summer camp. Those kids, those, those counselors, they, I mean, they... They're hired for the summer. They didn't go through any, and this is back in the 70s, they didn't go through any vetting process, right? I, I, I don't even know if they even taught them, like, CPR or, you know, like, you know, any kind of, like, first aid, right? You don't send a kid like that to a regular summer camp and expect these people to know how to handle him. You don't. You were asking for trouble. And the kid drowns, right? And it's like, they let my boy drown because they were fornicating. For all you know, they might have been like, Jason, don't go in the water. You're not assuming. He's like, I can't drown. And, and, shit, that was wrong. <laughs> I mean, I have to cut this entire segment out. No, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm speaking like that because he, you just saw me. He had like the like the, the weird, like jagged teeth or whatever. What are you saying? But I mean, you, you know what I mean? Like, great. Kids, kids that don't have any kind of disabilities, right? 
they are hard headed as shit. You know, <laughs> you see them all the time in the, like your grocery stores and at Walmart and shit, like running around like a bunch of assholes, right? And it's just like you know, little Tommy, stop that. And then, what's he do? As soon as you sell it, he does it again. It's like you know, don't stick your hand in there. You know, it's like so. If they won't listen, what makes you think this kid is going to listen? Right. So for all you know, they may have said, no, it's not swimming time, Jason. Jason wants to go swimming. All right, so I'm just saying, like, you don't know. They may have, they may have told him, like, no, Jason, it's not swimming time. Jason wants to go swimming. No, it's, it's not swimming time right now, Jason. Right? And then he goes right out, yay, Jason's swimming. And he's like, oh, no, oh, no. What am I? It's like, hot water for a baby, hot water for a baby. I, 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 I'm just saying, you, you don't know. But his mom's like, what happened? And it's like, you killed my boy, you dirty fornicators. And it's like, it's like if, if you knew for a fact that that's what they were doing, how come you didn't put your dumb ass out there? And like, anyway. I'm that, just, that would be my question, would be like, how, how does she know? Because like, if, if that's what you're doing, and you know, a kid drowns as a result of you like not lifeguarding, because I mean, it's not like you're gonna be, what happened? How did he drown? You're not gonna say, oh, yeah, we were fucking in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Could have happened to anybody. Yeah, right. I was like, you know, I was like, you know, because I me, mean, I'm a cancer or something. Yeah, that's what I signed on for. I didn't sign on to watch these kids. I signed on to get my dick wet. Just, you know, I mean, so they're not going to admit to that. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe she was just assuming. I don't know. And then, then what happens? She gets killed, trying to kill them for something that, that wasn't that wasn't their fault, right? right? And then Jason comes back to life. He's like, well, now I got to kill you because you killed my mom. It was like, but your mom was trying to kill us and everything because of something like, because of what you did. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't remember that. I just, I <laughs> they said it was swimming time and then they walked off somewhere. <laughs> no, Jason, no. Uh, I'm glad to see that Jason dying and coming back to life has, has healed him of his affliction. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you one thing, you learned how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just picture him like coming back to life and be like, huh, what a day. <laughs> I say old sport it was quite an event. Yeah. Ooh. Oh God, we're going to hell. Yeah, you, you did this. You I did absolutely this. opened Pandora's box and I don't feel a bit of remorse. Oh God, you do, you do this all the time. <laughs> you do this all the time. <laughs> Because I know you're going to take the bait. <laughs> you, you always do. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know how we jumped off of the Comic-Con conversation onto this, but I'm so glad we did. Well, because we were talking about, like, about a certain person being offended because they got compared to another person. <laughs> And I was talking about how, you know, well, I'm not offended. I don't really look anything like those guys except for I have long hair. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's in braids. I mean, but I'm just saying that, that that's the only thing that you have to go on. It's like, oh, look, you have long hair. So, I mean, <laughs> that just, eh, okay. <laughs> oh, now my head hurts. Oh. <laughs> and now you made me say a horrible thing <laughs> about people and like, like groups of people and demographics and uh, we'll have to put a trigger warning at the beginning of this episode I have a headache too that was like probably the hardest we've laughed all weekend see it's <laughs> <sighs> oh but you won't let me keep my political statements on the Corova game bar <laughs> no I can't I'm not asking you to do that that's you that's you putting that out there <laughs> I think we're done here. <laughs> I think we probably should be. It's it's been like an hour or so. This is this is an episode. I guess we don't have any sponsorships for this episode. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> we already lost the Pizza Charlie's sponsorship. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, we're not getting that back. <laughs> the only thing we got is that uh, that 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 book one. Well, that one in. Uh, but yeah. But luckily, that wasn't for this episode. They they will not want that on this episode. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, so that's uh, that's that's our episode here on uh, on Fat Thor cosplay. <laughs> yeah, 
I think we should name and change the title of this episode to Our Moms Think We're Retarded Mongoloids. <laughs> Thank you so good. <laughs> It reminds me of that that old time at live with uh, oh shit, what's it? Martin Short and see, what was it? Is it was it Martin Short and uh, but uh, it wasn't wasn't it wasn't Dan Castle that it was um uh crap uh the other guy from The Simpsons um shit, Harry I can't think of it but um it was the uh, the episode they did where they were going to be the first um. Uh, male, uh, what do you call those swimmers? Um, synchronized swimmers? Yes, the first male synchronized swimmers, and Martin Short's character was a little slow, and so he wore water wings, and, uh, <laughs> and it was like, because I don't swim so good. <laughs> <laughs> and they were doing the thing where this would be like, like, matches on the movie, so that it was like, 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 it's like, 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 like uh, uh, hey, hey, I know you, I know you, like, no, 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 not, you're not bad at him, you're just pointing at him. It's, that bit is, is so funny. That's awesome. We'll have it, to pull that up. Sometime. It's, it's uh, if you can find it. It's, it's uh, Martin Short and Harry Shearer, and they're the uh, first male synchronized swimmers with the Olympics. But it's not an Olympic event yet, but they're they're practicing and training for <laughs> hoping it will be. Oh, that's incredible. That's glorious. Okay, it's, it's well, fantastic. So it, it's made me think about that. We're we're sorry, everybody. Uh, please forgive us. But if you if you watch uh, if you watch any plays, then he'll he'll love us. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Voorhees, about her son, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, it's, it, you don't, you don't really know the facts, they, they don't, you don't know all the facts, you know, there's, there's good people on both sides, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, all right, uh, I was going to ask you if you had any last thoughts, but I don't actually feel the only one in here. We're done. <laughs> you don't want to know. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>